Nicola Greco heads CryptoNet Lab at Protocol Labs, where he works to build technological empowerment through providing secure building blocks for Web3 technologies. Today, he'll be speaking to us about his work on the Filecoin Data Retrievability Consortium. Welcome, Nicola. Hello, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. I am actually representing Irene. That was meant to give this presentation, but uh, due to last minute issues, uh, she couldn't join. And uh, this is most of Irene's work, and I'm here just to uh, present this. Uh, right. So the key topic of this uh, presentation is how can we guarantee retrieval from decentralized storage networks? There are several storage networks like Filecoin, which do offer retrieval, but not a retrieval as a guarantee. And we will dive into this uh, more. And it's very important that retrie the retrievability of files from decentralized storage network must be web scale. So we can't just have a small uh, decentralized storage network with a small amount of files that can be retrieved. Anything on the web should be able to be retrieved. And um, also this allows not just the, unbounded retrieval from, of storage, but unbound, unbounded onboarding of new um, of files in our network. Uh, we're going to cover four topics and uh, talk briefly about CryptoNet and then about data availability and friends, data retrievability, the topic of this conversation, and then our one of our proposals. Uh, we, if we work on data retrievability, uh, it's because it's we believe it's important, but it doesn't mean that uh, the other topics that we will look into, like data availability and proof of storage, are not important. We're also working on those. Uh, for context, CryptoNet is a, a crypto cryptography applied research group where we do uh, fundamental crypto research, uh, vector commitment, SNARKs, and so on, but also protocol design. And our goal is to have our group of researchers to collaborate with several other researchers to grants or collaborations. And out of these collaborations, we will have new researchers, DAOs, new projects, and so on. Uh, in, through time, we uh, published several uh, papers in the academic world related to uh, proof of storage, uh, consensus protocols, and so on. But also, we made substantial improvements to the Filecoin network. Uh, some of the most, most notable were Snarkpack or Snarkio. And one of the things that we also do is uh, we gather a lot of ideas and start conversations on potential new protocol design. And all of our work is public. All the work, all the work that we do with other um, organizations is public. And you can see our CryptoNet notebook, which is where we post down ideas the moment they come to us. Some of these ideas, like the one that we're presenting, uh, make, it, make it into products as well. So let's talk in high level about data availability. The protocols of data availability are, can be divided in two steps. One is dispersed and one is retrieved. The dispersed protocol works more or less like this. Uh, the node that wants to distribute the data distributes to uh, several nodes. Majority of the nodes approve that they have seen the data and then the protocol can continue. If majority of the nodes don't give approval of the data being seen, then the protocol holds or wait until uh, there is a disapproval. Why? Because it's very important for data availability protocols that data is distributed and that data had the chance to be distributed to enough nodes so, such that when we want to retrieve, there is at least one of N in some protocols or M of N in other protocols, uh, available nodes, honest nodes, that are willing to search the data. This is perfect for sorry. This is perfect for uh, roll-up data or blockchain data because we uh, this data doesn't have to be preserved for a long time. It can be pruned, and we need to make sure that at the moment of distribution, not only a few miners saw it, but as many uh, nodes as possible. But there is uh, some negative aspects of data availability as a theoretical problem. One is that it requires honesty assumption. The node will search the data. There is in, in most protocols, there is no guarantee that these nodes will be, will, will be willing to serve the data later on. And the second problem is that it requires consensus on dispersion, which means that um, uh, there, there's a limit of the throughput of new data that can be dispersed in a consensus protocol. Why? One of the core properties of a consensus protocol is that data gets distributed well enough so that everyone can verify um, that something has happened in the correct way. 
And in fact, most of these protocols uh, aim at uh, one to four megabytes per second, which is unfortunately not web scale if we want to, uh, if we want to do a storage network or, or guaranteeing retrieval. A reminder, retrieval is not guaranteed in these settings. Then there is another approach, which is the proof of sp uh, storage approach, which is the one that we mostly use in Filecoin and many other protocols use this as well. The idea is that uh, the node distributes the data to as many nodes uh, that they feel uh, that, that they're willing to replicate the data to. Uh, this works in Filecoin. In, uh, it's different for other protocols. And then from this moment onwards, uh, storage providers generate a proof uh, on a daily basis in the case of Filecoin to prove that they kept on storing the file. But even in this case, there is not strong cryptographic guarantee that the file will be searched. The way we guarantee it in Filecoin, of course, is that there's always, a, we believe that if you distribute your file in a, with several storage providers, or if you pick storage providers that have good reputation, then these storage providers will do a great job. And, 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 and that's how we guarantee, that's how most protocols guarantee the triple. And this guarantees on board the throughput because we don't have to have a, um, agreement uh, or like a consensus of a, uh, consensus on the fact that a file has been distributed. It's the role of the client to make sure that the, that the miners, that the storage providers have received the file. Um, so data retrievability is trying to solve uh, these two problems, unbounded um, onboarding, and uh, guaranteeing of retrieval, which doesn't rely on assumption of one of M nodes are honest. Also, most of these protocols are not really uh, designed uh, for providing retrieval long term. And while most of the previous, uh, most while that availability, uh, it's great for uh, solutions are great for rollups. They might not be great for say NFTs. If, especially if we think that uh, NFTs may be the standards for any digital asset, then one to four megabytes per second is not going to be enough. Plus, we don't want our data to be pruned in the future. We want to make sure that data can uh, still be retrieved uh, later on. So can we have a proof of delivery? So someone gives you a file and I have a proof that they can give me a file. Otherwise, I have a proof that they cannot give me a file. Well, we can't really have this without adding other assumptions. If we were other assumptions, so for example, there is a, th a third party that checks that this exchange has been done, then that would be perfect. Uh, but without trusted party assumptions, then this is not possible. So let's look at some attempts on how we go around um, guaranteeing retrieval. One way, the naive way, is to use the blockchain as a weakness. So if we, if we uh, assume that data in the blockchain is always going to be served uh, by nodes in the network, then what we can do, we can do uh, the following. We ask data to uh, the storage provider. The storage provider doesn't give the data to us. We force them to post the data on chain. Now, clearly, we can post a hash on chain. We can't post one megabyte file. So this will never work for uh, files that are or data that is um, gigabytes big. Uh, so this, te this technology, so storing data on chain, doesn't work for large data. The other alternative idea is a proof of retrievability is a beautiful primitive that the, as you query uh, the storage providers to give you proof of, the re of retrievability, they leak data. Uh, but it takes a very long time to leak a, a full file. So the idea would be to keep on querying the miners with proof of retrievability until they give you a full file. This works for small data. This doesn't work for large data. So the alternative is to have a, a trusted single party, uh, but uh, that wouldn't be ideal. And can we have a trusted third party that is decentralized? And uh, this is pretty much the approach that other oracles uh, uh, take. So for example, uh, Chainlink as a network of users that agree on uh, the price that they see across exchanges uh, for Bitcoin. And uh, in a very similar way, we are proposing an oracle um, uh, which says whether or not a file uh, can be retrieved or not. And it works in high level, it works uh, like this. Um, so the node ask for the retri retrieval to several storage providers. None of them gives them the file. And then the node goes to the Oracle and says, I didn't receive the file. Go check if you can receive the file. The Oracle goes and check. And if they don't receive the file, then they slash the storage provider. 
assuming that there is uh, some collateral that the storage provider must put in order to participate in this protocol. If they receive the file, well, then the retrievability oracle has seen the file and the retrievability oracle can serve the file back to the node. And uh, this is in high level, uh, one of the simple solutions that we're proposing. The, there are many big questions we will not cover in this conversation on how can we make an oracle this is a true through telling um, incentivized uh, network. The MVP, uh, which we will show uh, at the end, is um, having, uh, having the oracle as a network of referee and the clients and provider agree on a retrievability deal. You can think of this almost as an insurance contract on uh, retrieval of a file. When the client requires, requires, requests the file um, and it doesn't get it back, then it appeals to the referee, uh, the referee or the oracle, the referee committee. Um, then uh, we have a particular protocol where instead of uh, querying the entire committee, we query a subset, uh, even a single node, uh, as a, a single committee node. They go and check if they, if they can retrieve the file. If yes, they serve it back. If not, after K attempts, uh, of different uh, referees, then the provider is penalized. This is uh, the state machine of what I just discussed. Soon we're gonna have a, a very nice diagram, but um, uh, we have a, we're working towards a, um, a prototype that is gonna show in the next few slides. There are other several steps in the protocol, which is the sign up, the provider must sign up. Uh, we have a, a sampling of the referee, which is a, follows a particular protocol, and then the retrieval deal. The goal of the retrieval deal is that um, it can be possible on chain. It, the beauty of this protocol is that it could be cross chain also. Uh, the appeal works very sim in the, in the as I described before. Um, and there are set two, retrieval, two retrieval steps. Uh, the retrieval step number one is that the leader doesn't get the file. And so if the leader doesn't get the file, then they propagate a message saying that they didn't get the file and, uh, um, and, and, and they go to the next step. If the leader sees the file, then they share the files to the rest of the, of, to, to the, rest of the committee. And the com a majority of the committee signs that they've seen the file. And that's how we keep posting the file on chain. We just sample a smaller, uh, a smaller network to check that the file has been, uh, it, it is available and propagated and it can be witnessed. If the Oracle can receive the file, this means that the file was there from the storage provider and can then be propagated to the, to the client. Uh, if there is enough, uh, if there are K messages where the file was not well distributed, then the storage provider gets slashed. And uh, you can think of this uh, slashing almost like an insurance contract where this, the retrievability deal, in the retrievability deal, the clients puts a premium that the miner will get if they're always honest at the end of the period uh, and uh, when the when deal expires. And if the deal uh, is still active and the, guest, uh, and the file is not being delivered to the client, then they get slashed. We have a prototype of this smart contract, and uh, it's we um, we deployed this smart contract uh, uh, three days ago, and uh, it, it, it's live on uh, on Ethereum testnet, and you can create deals. And uh, the way you create, and you can create deals. You can see what are the live deals. You can cancel, create them, withdraw funds from contracts, and uh, and there is a slashing process. And right now we have. Um, a small set of retrieval nodes that are part of the uh, referee nodes that are part of the committee. And uh, this is how it's going to look like. And this UX is just for the MVP. Um, and anyone can put any IPFS CID in here. They can put what is the value of the deal, uh, the premium, and then uh, what is the duration of, uh, of the deal. And so, for example, someone wants to make sure that they can retrieve the deal throughout the course of a month. And then you will be able to manage your deals. Deals will deals are uh, stored as NFTs, and so you can think of uh, that. You will uh, in your, you could be you should, will be able to see NFTs in your in your in your wallet that shows which files you wanted to ensure. The goals of this project is that we don't want uh, to be um, a new network by any meaning. 
we want to be able to compose with every network. We want to give the ability for anyone that want to ensure, uh, sorry. We want to give the ability for anyone uh, to ensure IPFS files uh, and any, any node, not just Filecoin nodes, uh, should be able to provide the service. Of course, this, we want to target uh, Filecoin first. And although the, uh, although the smart contract has been deployed on Ethereum, as soon as we're going to have the FDM, this is going to be native in Filecoin as well. And uh, another goal is that it must compose with other retrievability solutions uh, that we are ourselves, uh, Protocol Labs, and uh, at, in CryptoNet are in particular are also working on. And, uh, and the goal is that uh, there will be um, a set of uh, smart contracts that uh, other, other future providers can pack up and offer a single optimal reliability solution. And we want to give flexibility in pricing so clients and storage provider can choose the premium and the slashing. And then finally, we want to be web scale. We want to make sure that any file on any data on Filecoin uh, can be insured and also data from other storage providers. This is uh, the QR code for the data retrievability data Oracle project. As I said before, I'm just representing the project. This has been work from Luca and Irene at CryptoNet with the help from uh, Sebastiano at Yomi Digital and Joanna from uh, HAD. And you can, enjoy, you can join the conversations on the new Slack uh, channel that we created, which is called Retirability Oracle. And more broadly, there is a lot of work that we're working on CryptoNet, from snap research to vector commitments to uh, threshold network and uh, five coin improvement proposals. And we're always looking for en great engineers to join our team. And in particular, product, ma product managers that can take some of these ideas and turn them into products. So if you're interested in that, uh, contact us. If you're working on similar solutions and you want to integrate with um, our, with the data reliability Oracle, but also with other projects that you're working on, feel free to reach out. Excellent. <clears throat> Thank you, Nicola and Luca and Irene for that interesting over overview of your work on retrievability. Really exciting news about that prototype. Look forward to seeing it deployed on FVM um, and for giving us some insight into your future goals about composability and scalability in the retrieval, uh, the retrieval research. We have time for a few questions. And we've got one over here. I'm just curious if what you would consider like prior art in this or um, like what have you been inspired by on the retrieval, on this sort of retrieval insurance thing? Um, I think that, um, the, 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 so let me put it in this way. Uh, since 2017, some of us have been thinking about these problems. And in the past five years, we looked into a lot of different things from, um, so uh, I've been influenced personally by a lot of people that uh, crossed uh, through Protocol Labs, uh, even uh, in, in, in person uh, in the company, but also at uh, events like this. There has been uh, several things that we didn't think that uh, would work in the past, uh, and, uh, and then they got wide adoption. And then there are, there's, a, there's a protocol that is changing. I think they do Oracle really well. And what's very interesting about that is that uh, the economics works out such that um, in order to um, fake the Oracle, so fake an Oracle outcome, you need to buy a large amount of tokens in the in chaining, and that's very expensive. And uh, so the question is, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's a solved problem to do an Oracle for, um, uh, for getting values of uh, websites. It's very difficult to do an Oracle that uh, retrieves uh, storage from uh, storage providers uh, or even from IPFS nodes and then serve the data back. So that's a little bit more of an Oracle. And most of the, most of the I think Chainlink has inspired a, a lot of this in a way. And then also in other solutions that we had, uh, that we had at Protocol Labs that uh, some that didn't make and some that uh, are working in a, in a different way. Um, uh, for example, Filecoin Saturn is a great example uh, to look into. And this is just a different 
take on neutral ability. And this is by no mean the, uh, the best way. This is one of the many, and it provides a specific service, which is insurance on retrieval. Thanks. One more question. Uh, cheers. Thanks very much for the really good talk, Nicola. Uh, I was just going to ask you to expand a little bit more, if you wouldn't mind, about the, uh, the insurance model and how you're thinking about the pricing and what kind of factors and how that's structured. Uh, yeah, so... Thanks. Uh, let me tell you, like, uh, some of our team are, um, we are a team of uh, researchers and not a team of uh, economists. And so what we decided was that uh, instead of uh, um, writing inside of the, inside the, uh, the, the protocol, um, what would be uh, a good price for insurance, we left it open. Or what is the token that needs to be used uh, for insurance, we decided to leave it open to the to the market, and this gives, of course, a lot of flexibility. In the, in, I'm sure in the MVP, we're gonna pick uh, some numbers. We're working with, uh, um, uh, I think, uh, with some uh, people from Block Science, uh, trying to understand what would be uh, a good value or good pricing uh, mechanism. But there's one. So I, to answer you, I don't have a good answer on what would be a good price. There are too many factors to be taken into consideration and there is still analysis that needs to be go through this. But there's one thing that is important is that uh, it doesn't mean that the, uh, the storage provider is uh, necessarily losing dollars or, fi or Filecoin. It could even be that the storage provider puts um, as collateral the, uh, some reputation score. Uh, there's another project that Luca is going to present later on, which is called the uh, uh, Storage Metrics DAO. And the idea is to collect metrics from the network. And these metrics are basically the reputation of a storage provider. And uh, the, every time you're going to lose uh, files, you're going to lose uh, reputation score. So that's, that's interesting for collateral. And in, in, in case we, don't, we want to have uh, under collateralized uh, uh, retrievability deals. Um, the, then on the premium, I think uh, likewise, uh, the premium, if it's a file that is very important, the storage, the client can put uh, whatever uh, premium to the miner as a, as a reward. Um, yeah. Thanks again. For those that are interested in doing pricing models for this, this is the best time uh, to get into the Slack channel and, and, and get in contact with us. Great. With that call to action, I think we'll thank the Data Retrievability Consortium one more time.